Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya of JSA, coming to you from Virtual Metro Connect 2021. Joining me today, my good friend, Tom Brown, of course, the president and CEO of DataGrid. Tom, welcome to JSA TV. Well, thank you, Jamie, and thanks again for having me today. As always, it's a pleasure. And, you know, we're talking about an address that's near and dear to our heart our hearts here, uh, 60 Hudson Street, um, and DataGrid, a company that is really the heart and soul of, of that uh, core carrier hotel. Can you tell our viewers, if they're not familiar, a little bit more about DataGrid? Sure, Jamie. So DataGrid uh, established in 2011 as a, the single largest data center here in the New York area. And I will argue that in the metropolitan area, really two things that I like to share uh, with our viewers is uh, how DataGrid uh, approaches the market. One, uh, we have robust power infrastructure, which is unheard of in the city of New York. We come to our customers with 15 megawatt uh, power source. And as we see things evolve and trending in 2021, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit that, about that in a moment, uh, is that we're seeing a lot more uh, power dense applications, whether it's so autonomous vehicles, whether it's, it's, it's uh, uh, healthcare, remote healthcare, whether it's it's just the, the abundance of uh, data consumption, we're seeing more and more power. So we had the good fortune of being able to, separate from the building, be able to provide 12 megawatts uh, fed four feeds from the utility. In addition, this building and amongst other buildings is a key aggregation point uh, globally, actually. It's one of the most recognizable addresses uh, in the globe. And what's really interesting is the fact that we always talk about cross-connect burden, the ability to cross-connect seamlessly and effectively with our partners. And that creates a challenge because the cost. And one of the things that we differentiate ourselves is our ability to provide uh, a direct connect product, which directly connects you from your presence to your partner. And we don't charge for cross-connects. There, there is a fee for uh, the, the, the build to it, but what it does is it creates not only uh, efficiency, but also creates uh, a cost effectiveness. And it's really been, we've been recognized by Capacity Media for the last two years uh, as, as a change agent in, in the marketplace. One of the things we did uh, a, a year ago is we pivoted. We went from a wholesale model. We have two floors, 120,000 square feet. Uh, and we've now shifted to uh, smaller increments of space, being able to accommodate uh, the, what we call now, uh, uh, EPOPs, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as far as trends are concerned, where people only need 50, 200, 250 kW, as opposed to the larger footprints. Now, will we uh, address some of the larger requirements? Absolutely. But one of the things that we see in it is the smaller increments of power dense uh, applications here. Oh, I love how you call it EPOPs. That's interesting. I, I want to get back to that. I also want to talk about the demand you're seeing at 60 Hudson Street in New York City marketplace, of course. Uh, particularly during the pandemic, and, and really how is 2021 looking for data grid? So we're really excited, Jamie, about 2021. Uh, last year, we saw opportunities that we otherwise wouldn't see uh, in our funnel, whether they're coming from large enterprises, whether they're coming from city agencies, whether they're coming from traditional service providers that have really seen that significant boom uh, from the capacity requirements. Uh, for example, uh, Zoom Video, who sits within our data center through our partnership with Digital Realty, uh, they doubled their space. Uh, you saw some of the CDNs, uh, you saw uh, some of the traditional providers just really requiring additional space. So uh, we're really excited about what lies ahead. Uh, we have a couple of uh, interesting opportunities, whether they're sized from 50 kW all the way up and including an entire floor. So we're really excited about the prospects uh, of, of what lies ahead in the demand set. And the demand set is set around really an aggregation point. It's about latency and it's about ability to provide dense power applications. And that's a really a specific niche that, that uh, 60 Hudson Street has now been accustomed to as opposed to uh, some of the other uh, properties that maybe whether it's in New Jersey or even in remote areas of the country. So you're gonna see more and more with these aggregation points. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of the EPOPs that we've heard from uh, from our customer requirements, which are smaller, dense, where you're able to aggregate your traffic and then, and then bring it out and disperse it to uh, some of the larger data center farms. 
Oh, I just, I love that. Um, and, and that flexibility and, and to your point uh, earlier, the, the latency uh, concerns, it, it really sets you up to, to be a prime player for the rollout of 5G or the continual rollout of 5G. Um, can you speak to that regarding data grid? I can. So for the very first time, Jamie, uh, and of course, we've always had discussions, but we're having material discussions with the, the, the wireless providers. Now think about that. Would you ever think that wireless meets wireline in a building like 60 Hutchins Street? And really what they're finding as we roll out 5G and we roll out this smart city, which it's, it's uh, being deployed right now, is that they're in need of aggregation points. And if you think about the island of Manhattan, you think about New York City, what do you think about is 60 Hudson Street. What we really need is the ability to have more of these aggregation points. So we're working with some of these wireless providers right now to create applications to deploy that. Almost reverse engineer where you have your head end equipment in an aggregation point like 60 Hudson Street and then tether back uh, whether it's a whether it's a light pole, whether it's a a, a building or a campus within uh, the island of Manhattan via fiber. So we're really excited about uh, working through these different applications uh, here in New York City. Uh, we're we're thrilled about that. That's very exciting, and and I couldn't think of a better address in the world uh, to be one of those key aggregation points that sort of are reverse engineered, if you will. I uh, love that. Um, and Tom, you know, as a friend of mine for many years, we won't name the years, uh, but many years uh, being a friend of yours, um, I've watched you grow as a thought leader in this in this uh, wonderful industry of ours. A big fan of your blog, by the way. Um, and um, tell me, what are these top industry trends for 2021 um, that uh, that are coming our way? Well, thank you. I appreciate you uh, recognizing me as a, as a thought leader. Um, but really, what you're seeing is is a major shift. We're seeing a major shift to the cloud, and we're going to continue to see that. And and that's really the the cloud providers are, are creating these these epops in these in these metro uh, cities, such as New York and throughout the globe. Um, we're also seeing it, a shift to the to the tier two and tier three cities. How important. I, two or three, four years ago, we wouldn't talk about Columbus, Ohio, for example, as a, as a key uh, market to, to aggregate traffic. Um, and you're going to see more and more of these tier two and tier three markets uh, come into play. Think about 2021. We're going to continue to see uh, the, the rollout of, of additional uh, data center space. Just let's take a look at the market here in the United States, for example. Microsoft, you know, they, they announced that they, they deploy 280 megawatts and they're going to continue to deploy that through, throughout and, and the other hyperscalers. Under construction, Silicon Valley, 279 megawatts. It's just startling. Chicago, 137 megawatts. Uh, Arizona, you know, 50 plus megawatts. It's just startling that in 2018, we said, you know what, we hit a plateau. Well, guess what? We doubled that. And if you really take a look at it, it's, it's amazing the fact that uh, this, this trend is still gonna continue, but we saw the, the consumption uh, in March just trend up like a hockey stick for the ability for bandwidth, and we're gonna continue to see that. So uh, the capacity and diverse routes is so, so uh, critical because we also have to replace the end of life of some of the legacy networks, right? That just can't handle that. Um, let's take a step back though. Think about for you at JSA and think about what we need to. You have a, a, an outstanding team that has worked remotely since the beginning, but the productivity, and I can't speak for you, but I can speak for us at DataGrid, the productivity that I've seen uh, as we transition to remote, you're now, there is no more delineation between home and work. And I'll find myself at midnight, 6 a.m., whenever it is, you're on your computer and off you go. Um, and the productivity has just skyrocketed and the ability to communicate has been seamless. So I think that trend is going to continue and that's here to stay uh, as we trend in 2021 because we always talk about, hey, what's happening? What's evolving with 5G? What's happening with some of these new technologies? For example, IoT, right? 42 billion devices will be, uh, will be connected to the internet. That equates to data consumption. That equates to data center space. But we also have to talk about uh, as, as us as an environment in a company that's being able to thrive and be successful. Yeah. And now as we reestablish, and I look forward to seeing everybody at the next trade show and we reestablish some normalcy, 
you have to re-identify your culture as a company. So that's a trend that we're going to see in 2021. So uh, we can really fixate ourselves on what's the exciting trends as far as is, is, uh, is uh, what's to come from 5G and, and deployment of networks and diversity. But we also have to think about who we are as companies and really Reestabling, reestabling yourself. Is it two to three days a week in the office? Is it one or two days uh, remote? How is that all going to work? And how's that going to transpire? And hey, what is the? Do we establish a dress code, for example? Uh, what's that look like? Um, all of these things that enter your mind when now, hey, we're going to hopefully towards the middle to end of the year as everyone gets inoculated that we reestablish uh, a culture that goes back to the normalcy. But it's here to stay and. Uh, We've, we've created uh, levels of productivity at data grid that we haven't seen in years past. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Tom. I think um, we've forever shifted in the way we do work and, and balance work and family um, and, and you know, remote working allows for that. Um, and, uh, and in a way we've relaxed a bit more, like you talked about dress code um, because we all anticipate, expect you know, kids and pets flying around in the background now. We've certainly seen enough uh, YouTube video of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it all goes down to, you know, we've done our jobs. We've, we've created that infrastructure to allow for that bandwidth consumption so people could work, learn, entertain from home. Um, and it's, uh, it's really a testament to the strength of our industry and, uh, and, and to places like DataGrid. So thank you for all you do. Where can our viewers go to find out more? So uh, what really I had a lot of fun with over the, the past year is, is the Interconnect Hub podcast. And we've seen a, a great deal of progress on that front, really just bringing leaders of the industry and, and, and talking about trends and new technologies. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun. So I, I would ask the, the audience to take a listen to the Interconnect Hub. And if you are interested in becoming a guest on the uh, podcast, by all means, because it's just conversation uh, like you and I are having to talk about what's happening in the marketplace. Of course, our website uh, really tells uh, the story about Data Grid and who we are and what we do. Uh, I'm a big fan of LinkedIn and social media. Now more than ever, social media, uh, we've transitioned from traditional marketing to a more, uh, more social-based uh, marketing um, because this is, that's what we have, right? And you got to leverage that. And of course, uh, the traditional way of just reaching out to, to me directly, whether it's via email, my phone, uh, I, I think it's, I always welcome phone calls and the ability to uh, speak about what's happening here. Uh, love it. Yep. That's datagrid.com with the Y on grid, G-R-Y-D.com. Um, and uh, please, absolutely. I'm a big fan. Check out that podcast. It's amazing. As well as um, Data Grid on LinkedIn and other social platforms. Thank you so much, Tom, for your time here. Thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Jamie, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. And everybody, uh, Virtual Metro Connect, and everyone at home, happy networking. Mm -hmm.